Welcome to this presentation of QMonitor RF. Today we will demonstrate the many test use cases of this application software. The application is designed to operate with the STM32WB Nucleo, USB dongle, or any custom design board that is fitted with an STM32WB device. We will begin by providing a short review of the tool basics, capability and features, prerequisites required, basic QMonitor RF overview, we will introduce some testing use cases, advertising and scanning, RF testing scenarios, scripts, and how to use them. The tool provides standardized test capability. As such, it is compliant with the Bluetooth LE direct test mode as outlined in the Bluetooth Core 5.0 specification. While the tool may be used for other standards, we will focus only on Bluetooth LE. It is assumed that the user already demonstrates a good understanding of the STM32WB tools and a good understanding of the Bluetooth LE standard. A minimum list of prerequisites is shown. Please take the time to review the listed video sessions. It is also highly recommended to review the user manual UM2288 prior to viewing this video. In addition, several important links are provided for further reference. For this session, we require only the use of the QMonitor RF. The STM32Q programmer will be used to load the transparent mode hex files as provided for each of the Nucleo and USB boards. It is assumed that this is pre-installed prior to this presentation. If you have not already done so, please take a few minutes to install the hex files onto each of the Nucleo and USB boards. IDEs are provided for information only, although these tools can also be used to load the transparent mode, but this is not a focus of this presentation. We will require the LE LightBlue Explorer app installed on your smartphone, tablet, or laptop. You can obtain this app from either the App Store or Google Play Store, if you have not already done so, please take a few minutes to access the appropriate App Store, download, and install. A P Nucleo WB55 evaluation kit is highly recommended. This kit is available with a nuclear board and a USB dongle. We will be using both devices simultaneously to demonstrate the capability of this tool. Let's have a quick overview of the Cube Monitor RF application. The STM32WB comprises two processors, a Cortex M0 Plus core and a Cortex M4 core. The Cortex M0 Plus houses the Bluetooth low energy radio as well as the BLE stack in binary form. Essentially, from the point of view of operation, the M0 Plus represents a black box to the outside world. The M4 operating with the transparent mode application provides the interface mechanism which commands can be sent to and received from the M0 Plus BLE core. This then provides the ability to perform link testing, link verification, direct commands in the form of send-receive sequences through the HCI interface. Let's begin. Begin by connecting the Nucleo board to a USB interface and launching the QMonitor RF application. Select the BLE standard. Under Select Device, select the COM port, press Connect. Successful connection will show a summary of ACI commands in the main window and the results log in the JSON window. Let's explore some key features of this particular part of the interface. The top ribbon represents a summary of all the ACI command and interfaces available through to the WB device itself. Check the Select All box to uncheck all the boxes, then check the HAL box. A summary of all HAL interfaces available in this application appears. Scroll to the Set TX Power Level line. Click on it. A new field opens up with more detail regarding this command itself. Items in the bubble can be modified or left as is. Items outside the bubble cannot be modified within this part of the application. Let's send the command. On the right hand side in the log status, you'll see that the how command was sent and a command complete represents an error free response. Press the ACI HAL TX power level, which opens up more information, and more detail regarding this command. Pressing on the plus button, opens up even more information. Of importance is this raw data field, which we'll use later during our script. Let's now look at the ACI Utilities. Select the ACI Utilities tab. We will set the nuclear board into an advertising state. Select the advertising box. We'll leave all advertising parameters in their default mode to allow for a straightforward, simplified connection. One change we will make, however, is we'll add an extension to the WB name itself. In this case, I've added Nucleo. Start advertising. In the log window, you will see 
a summary of all commands that were sent to the device. Go to your smartphone or tablet, open the LightBlue Explorer app, allow it to update. The device STM32WB-Nucleo should appear in your app display. Select the device once it appears and connect to it. Note that once a connection is established, the result is shown in the log status window. Let's examine an additional ACI test scenario that can be implemented. Connect both the USB board and the Nucleo board together into the system simultaneously. In this case, I'm using a USB hub to make this connection. Launch another session with Cube Monitor RF. Select the BLE. On the select device, select the second COM port, press connect. We now have the USB dongle on this one instance of the Cube Monitor RF and the Nucleo board on this other instance. Go to the Nucleo board, check that the advertising box is still checked, start advertising. Go to the USB board, select ACI Utilities, and under the Discover Remote Services, check the box and press Scan. Once complete, the status box will show a vendor-specific event. Go to Select Device, select the WB Nucleo, and we can connect to this board. Once connected, we can explore the services that are available on this board. Let's look now at some RF tests that can be used for link testing and also certification tests. For this test, it may be necessary to reset and restart both boards and also restart two separate instances of Cube Monitor RF, one for the Nucleo, one for the USB. On a Nucleo board, go to the RF test tab. A menu opens up that corresponds to the requirements of a direct test mode and provides the functionality required for SIG testing and also certification testing, such as FCC. Scroll into any parameter to see the degree of choice available for that parameter. The start tone parameter allows one to set a CW carrier at any of the TX frequency channels. This is useful for centering a spectrum analyzer, measuring spurious and phase noise, as well as providing a signal for link budget or antenna validation. We'll not be demonstrating this function, but we'll leave it to the user to explore more about this function. We'll now perform some packet testing. We're going to set the Nucleo board as a transmitter and the USB dongle as a receiver. Leave all transmit parameters as they are. Go to the USB dongle. Under RF tests, ensure that the two parameters match up. Important that this test is done in this order. On the USB board, start the receiver, go back to the transmitter board, and start the transmitter. Wait a few seconds, and in this order, stop the transmitter and then stop the receiver. A packet count will show packets transmitted versus packets received. They should match within plus or minus two or three packets. This will work with any BLE device. Doesn't matter, it does not have to be a USB dongle or a WB nuclear board. Any two devices that are BLE compliant should be able to operate. For the packet error rate test, we will disconnect the USB board from the link. We don't need this, we'll just close the menu and head over to the transmitter side. We're going to go back in our arrows, select the packet error rate test mode, select this mode, select the second device, which is COMI, which is the USB board, and we're going to connect it from here. Once connected, we can configure the test mode. So configure tester, we'll leave all parameters in our default mode, and we'll configure the DUT. So the DUT here is a nuclear board, which is connected to COM4 port. We'll configure these parameters. We're going to ask for RSSI, and we're just going to start the test. So every three seconds, the RSSI will update. Once we have waited a little bit of time, we can just stop the test. Once we stop it, we'll see the transmitted packets are transmitted and the received packets received. They match within plus or minus one the packet error rate loss is 0%. And this is how you can use two devices to do a packet error rate link and a packet error rate test. We will now examine the use of scripts. What is a script? A script is a method to write pseudocode with a specific set of ACI commands to program a specific operational scenario within a WB device. It can be used for testing just like any other element presented thus far. An example script is shown. 
comments are indicated by the hash mark, specific commands are shown in line. When we executed the advertising scenario, for example, the log window shows a summary of all the command steps that were sent through WB in order to allow this scenario to execute. And we reviewed the individual commands. We saw in great detail the command string that was sent to the WB in raw data form. We can use this to set up our own custom script. Let's close some windows. In this script, we've replicated most of the advertising parameters. We made a few changes to make this look like a heart rate service. Let's try it out. Let's bring up the Cube Monitor RF application once again. Select scripts, browse which you already know is there, open the test file, and it's now loaded. We can run the script now by just setting start script. One by one, each command executes the results shown in the log file until we reach the end. We should now have a complete heart rate service operating, and we'd be able to check this with the Light Blue Explorer app. The service shows up as the STM32WB, that's what we named it in the script. Let's connect to it. And the UUID shows that it's a heart rate service. I hope you enjoyed this presentation of Cube Monitor RF and have now gained more knowledge on how to use this powerful and flexible test tool. Please refer to the prior videos and application notes referenced earlier in this presentation. We hope you can utilize some of these concepts presented in your own development and integration. Thank you.